Hello everyone, Late Night Co here to give you a little bit of a tutorial kind of thingy about something I've been messing with around. If you're gonna skip straight into the nitty gritty of things, there's a timestamp in the description you can click to, well, jump straight into the action. Otherwise, let's get started. Um, Tomb Raider 2, well, classic Tomb Raider ports for the PC, uh, in some aspects leave a lot to be desired, and one of the aspects of this is the controls. Um, Controls work fine. I mean, if you're gonna play with a keyboard, it's perfectly functional if that works for you. But if you want to play with a controller, um, it's really, really limited, and it really feels like it's just an afterthought. But it does have uh, native controller support. And a lot of people... <laughs> what I've noticed about the guys in the community, at least, a lot of people believe that uh, Tomb Raider does not have any native controller support, or the controller support just doesn't work in modern systems which is false, it actually works. It's just that <clears throat> it's limited, and in many cases using something like joy to key is a better option. But I will show you how to, how I kind of get it working perfectly fine without using joy to key at all, just using the controller support internally from the game. So I'm gonna use Tomb Raider 2, but this should work with Tomb Raider 3, 4, and 5. Tomb Raider 1 is a completely different animal, so we're not gonna get into that. We not, will not cover tier 1 but from 2 to 5, it should work. So, <clears throat> what we got here is the configuration from uh, Tomb Raider 2. Um, one important thing, the Steam version has some kind of a controller kind of thing that it lets you like wrap it or something, I don't know. It might conflict with that. Uh, I have issues with controllers on Steam games, like they, they disappear sometimes. I just get like the Xbox style controllers to show up, but the other ones don't show up. It's kind of a mess. Sometimes it does just work completely fine. Anyway, so as you can see the configuration here, if you go to controls, um, there's this option that says joystick, or it says enable joystick. You can enable this, or you can disable it as well. If you enable it, you can get this drop-down list and you can get any control that you have plugged in. Now, for this to work, you can actually use an Xbox-style controller. It will show up. An X input, it will show up. It shows a controller, and in parentheses it says, like, the name of your controller. But the problem is, and let me tell you, okay, what are the limitations of this? So, the best example I can show you is this uh, controller I got here. This is a Logitech F310. Uh, why the Logitech F310? Because this thing has in the, in the back has this slider thing over here, that one. It lets you choose between X input and direct input. And in direct input mode, it behaves exactly like a Logitech Dual Action. This is a Logitech Dual Action. It's a really old controller. It's a pretty good one, though. For my liking, at least. And this controller just emulates that controller and perfectly fine. And X input, it just emulates like a Nextbox style controller. So, you, so that's why it says Logitech Dual Action. This is an F310, not a Dual Action. But it, doesn't matter. And I have the USB gamepad. This is like an adapter for a, you know, PlayStation style controller. So um, I have my um, um, dual analog here. It's like a controller for a PS1 I'm connected through this adapter. And it should work fine. So there's another controller I got over here that might work as well, which is this genius controller that looks really neat with the flames and everything, but it's terrible. Uh, it's a crappy controller. So you might want to avoid that. <laughs> so, bottom, bottom line, if your controller shows up in this drop-down list, you can use it. And you can maybe do combinations to, with joy to key to get everything to work correctly as you want to. So, if it shows up, you just select it, enable joystick, and you press OK. Now, this is going to close down, and you can launch your game. I don't know what that means, but anyway. We got this again, but it works fine. Oh, just messed up my resolution here. Okay, anyway. Should be showing. It is not. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, it's not showing up for some reason. You know, it was working perfectly fine before I started recording the video, but, you know... <laughs> that's how this app works, like... The moment you try to do something, uh, it just doesn't work. The moment you gotta try to go serious on this stuff, it just, just, just doesn't show up, it doesn't work. 
Okay, now it's on. Okay. <clears throat> so, limitations. Um, okay, now you see the controller. So, limitations. Movement is only a sign to this analog stick. Now, that, did, that, that could immediately put you off, because you can say, how can I play the classic Tomb Raider with a freaking analog? That's true. That will be really uncomfortable. And the way you configure the controller here, you go to this menu, and if you press uh, right or left on where it says default keys, you get the user keys. Then I made a little bit of a mess so I can actually configure, so you can, you can see um, it actually works. It's like most up and down, and I'm not using Joy2Key okay. at all. So, sometimes you have to use the keyboard to skip certain things. So now, of course, if you want to use like PS1 style controls, like the default ones that you hold, walk to sidestep and stuff, that's not going to work just because of the nature of the scene. Now, you can, and maybe you can use your two key for it. We need to script a lot and you need, it will never get straight to the point. You may want to use specific configurations that you cannot do here. But in any way, this is a pretty neat uh, option. Now, the cool thing about this controller is that it has this mode button here. If you press this, you see it's this green light list in, and it swaps the D-pad with the analog stick, so now the D-pad is doing all the work, which is perfect. And I have this already configured. What the hell did I do? Oh, jump. Jump is, uh... Jump is square, and this one. Now, I, I don't know how to go back. <laughs> Roll this... This one. Uh, there's no way to go back. So that's one thing. Um, you just have to press escape on the keyboard, so you have to use a keyboard to set an action, so that's another limitation. And... New game. Again, yeah. We can use a menu button to skip this. And, and now we're in the game, and I'm using the controller. And it works perfectly fine. <laughs> and this is without using Joy 2 Key at all. And it's 100% uh, functional. It's. Uh, it works. But as I said, you know, it requires a controller that has that feature to swap the analogs. If your controller does not have that, or using an Xbox controller, and the problem with the Xbox controller, apart from this uh, analog thing, is that these two buttons here, the triggers, are analogs, uh, analog controls on an Xbox. You cannot use any analog controls as keys on this thing. They they just don't respond to it. For example, if I put like run, and it's sort of, like moving the analog, you can see they do nothing. Just like, just pad H, just, just go back to normal. So yeah, um, if you have the right uh, hardware to do this, you can do it, and without joy to key at all, and... You know, sometimes joy to key can be a pain, it, it kind of messes up, so it messes up, and... You have issues with it, like... Um, controls not really doing what it should do, or messing up, or like mixing up with the other controllers. This is... A lot more reliable, but it's really, really limited. But if it, this works for you, then great. Um, and you can you can experiment with it and see if it this is something that will work for you. This is something that functions. So if you get an F310, a Logitech F310, which is a pretty affordable controller, and it's good for the price, uh, you can use that, and it, it will work for you. And <clears throat> some of the PS1 adapters. Um, they have, like, when you don't have, for example, this, uh, this controller that's plugged in, if you press the analog button, you get, well, not the green light, but you get the red light that's in, when you enable the analog controls. If you leave it, like, off, on the adapter I have, this D-pad is, ma is mapped as the left analog. So this is ready to go. You can, you can use this controller to play tier 1 on your PC perfectly fine, without needing for joy to key. Naturally, um, and this works in Windows 10, I'm doing this in Windows 10 in, mo in a modern system, I'm not using any old computer, and naturally this does work in an old computer. 
as I said, as long as your controller shows up in the configuration menu, you should be fine. And I think the GOG version is a little bit more reliable than the controller than the Steam one because of that, like, wrapper kind of thing that Steam has that is... I, I don't know. I don't really know much about it, like, but uh, apparently it kind of causes conflicts at times. Which is kind of annoying. <clears throat> but yeah. So from, from now I, I will just play the rest of the level with the controller. And just show that I'm, I'm playing this natively. And good to keep is not necessary in this case. So I, I assume that you can use joy If you have like an Xbox controller or you have a controller that doesn't let you swap the analog for the D pad. <laughs> Um, you can use joy to key just for those controls and use like the native thing for this and it might work for you like less controls less like conflicts and stuff and another thing you may want to check and that may cause conflict is that if you're going to use joy to key make sure you disable controller support like the enable joystick option you disable it on your, on your tier 2 configuration otherwise um, you might run into conflicts because what you're doing with Joy2Key is just make your controller press keyboard keys. And so you don't need the controller support at all. So keep that in mind. But otherwise, um, uh -huh. it's, a, it's a perfectly fine idea. And of course, if you have any more questions and ask something about this whole thing, you can comment something below and you can ask me and I will try to help you as best as I can trying to get this to work because TR, classic TR on modern computers are uh, a big pain. Unfortunately, like, you know, Square Enix, Crystal Dynamics, or Core Design, none of them has really bothered with uh, mm -hmm. modernizing the code for classic TR to make them more compatible on modern systems. It's just like use hacks and and you know mods made by the community instead of you know then maybe providing the source code to the fans to those so they can actually create a port of this game that works in modern Windows based on the code instead of using Open Lara, which is a, a recreation and being a recreation is not perfect at all. And yeah. Tomb Raider doesn't get much love, to be honest, to like, um, particularly the classic games, like, they're like just abandoned to the luck. So, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. It is how it is, man. <laughs> didn't play the, the track I was supposed to play here. <laughs> I tell you, you know, classic TR, modern PCs, they don't mix together, they're like, like, water and oil. Uh -huh. And it sucks because it shouldn't be that way. So yeah, you can actually give this a try if, if you're having issues with Dr. Kiwi. Um, trying the native controller support might be a good option, actually. So, we're gonna do this entire level. Why not? So, in this case, um, as, is, as I said, uh, sidestep with the walk button does not work because of the nature of how controls for TR on the PC are like uh -huh. configured. Because this this port was made to be played with a keyboard, like in the sense that how they configured like the whole idea of the controls. It's uh, it's not like a the PS version that was made to be played with a controller. Um, this was made to be played with a keyboard. This port does not really. Do, as I said, I, I think the controller support is pretty much an afterthought. I didn't really did much with it. But 
as I said, if you have the right the right stuff to use it, it does work beautifully. Like this is it's perfectly fine. And for the flares, I just one advantage over the, like the the PS version is that you can. That you can map the R3 and L3 buttons, which is, you cannot do with a, on the on the PS1. Just just doesn't recognize those buttons. So can do some neat stuff with it, like uh, uh -huh. um, use one of them. I, I'm actually using a R3 for the flares since I use. Um, L and R triggers for a uh, test step. And well, TR, uh, tier 1 on the, on the PC does not have a proper pause menu. Well, it's not a menu, but it doesn't have a pause screen. So you, like, start button. Oh, start? Yeah. Start button. Um. It just does nothing. You have to select to open the inventory. Well, that's how I have it configured myself here. It's just better be as close as it can be for the PS1 controls. So yeah, fairly limited, but it works. And works with modern controllers and modern systems and Yeah, Yoichi Key if you have if you have an F three ten, Yoichi Key is completely unnecessary if if you want like simple controls and you don't really need much else. Like I don't know, I remember this guy that used to have like uh, the analog sticks configured to like he will press it up, like uh, like the left analog stick will like press it up and he will select like for example the pistol like, to the left, it will like the shotgun, and so on and so forth. That kind of stuff you cannot do it with a uh, with like the like the inner configuration thing on here. Like, Tomb Raider 2 on the PC has a lot of extra buttons that they don't exist on the on the PS version, like hotkeys for the the weapons and the med packs. So um, <clears throat> you cannot take advantage of them with the controller configuration here. They just give you some controls that you can um, configure. If you don't move... Well, sometimes you don't move and these guys just, they just walk around, they don't really attack you. I don't know why. Well, as you can see, I com successfully completed the first level of Tomb Raider 2 using a controller without joy to key On modern systems, with a modern controller. But there you go! And it took me 10 minutes, which is ludicrous. But either way, that is gonna be for this video. I hope you found it useful, and if you know anyone who's actually having trouble using joy to key and is trying to play these games, you may send this to them and it might help them. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you on another video or another stream, I don't know. Something's gonna happen someday, I guess. <laughs> see ya!